The Paul S. Sarban Silver Spring Transit Center is a three-tired, state-of-art, multi-model passenger transportation center. This facility is named after former Senator Paul S. Sarbans. It would feature 32 bays for Metro, ride-on buses, shuttle UM, kiss-and-ride axes, Metro Rail, and Mark train service. The center would significantly increase the capability, safety, and efficiency of an aging transit location at the heart of downtown Silver Spring. According to the official website of the center, this building would eliminate existing traffic conflicts, increase pedestrian safety, provide well-developed bicycle access into the mass transit site, and facilitate multimodal transfers. The center is due to be finished by early 2015. More than a decade from the original end time, the construction has costed $112 million. Train and bus hub, which is $80 million over budget and behind schedule. The foundations were found to be unsafe and in need of significant repairs because of cracking and a lack of supporting steel. So what caused the transit center to be delayed so much? How on earth was this allowed to happen? To find answers, we spoke to Jerry McCoy of the Silver Springs Historical Society and Tina Slatter of the Action Committee for Transit. As those involved with the project declined requests to be interviewed. On the side, I'm the founder and president of the Silver Spring Historical Society. Because ineptitude in the Montgomery County government, um, out of all of these um, articles, I pulled out um, just a few that sort of succinctly uh, tell the story of um, this, this bumbling of government bureaucracy. Um, starting in 2000, this is the first article we had in our file, uh, Transit Center on Track, Construction on 40 Million Project to Begin in July. That's July of 2000. And then from 2003, transit center construction a year and a half away. So that was going to push it up to about uh, 2005 that they were going to begin construction. And then from uh, 2004, we have Silver Spring Transit Center to arrive in 2008. It, it, it just becomes humorous after a while. And then this little brochure here with um, Monty the Penguin, uh, who is uh, the, um, one of the symbols of downtown Silver Spring. Starting late 2008, Silver Spring Transit Center. And then we fast forward uh, four years to 2012, a decade of delays at the Transit Center. And then from 2013, last year, Transit Hub won't, won't open until mid-2014. Well, I guess they missed that deadline. Um, so it's just really embarrassing. Um, what irks me the most is as a Montgomery County taxpayer, it's just millions and millions of dollars wasted. Um, this transit center was budgeted originally at $45 million, even though some of these early articles kind of have a wide range of um, 39 million was the lowest I saw at one point, and then they kind of went up to 59 million. So. 45 million sounds like a good median um, amount. But now it's, it's surpassed $120 million. And this is just for a concrete bunker bus transit center that has no redeeming architectural qualities to it. And it's now tripled the estimate of what it was going to cost to build. And it's just a real waste of, of, of precious county government taxes that I think certainly could be used in better places like our schools, and health care. Um, and um, so who, who knows how many more tens of millions of dollars they'll have to pour into it before the thing becomes uh, safe to use, you know, with all the cracking that they discovered. And now they're basically rebuilding the structure. Do you think it's fair to hold the contractors partially accountable? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I mean they're, they're easily 50% of the problem. And I, I think probably the overarching problem with this project has been one government agency not talking to the other, not talking to this contractor, not talking to that contractor, and it's, it's just an endemic problem with government. So then who you think is mostly at fault here? Is it the county or is it the individual? Uh, the contractors. Yes. You know what? I, 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 I did not read the entire KCE engineering report. 
but I read the executive summary, which was very long and very technical. There's no way I could have understood the actual data in the report. But that particular report was finding fault with all five parties. It was like each one of them had dropped the ball, so to speak, at one point. And when you had that many, I don't, know if, I, don't I don't mean small mistakes, but when you had that many errors compounding, it just wasn't going to work. You could have, you know, some top-rate football players from lots of different teams playing together, right? But if they don't have a coach, I don't think they're going to do as well as another team of top-rate players from different places that do have a good coach. A lot of the media has um, made the comparison of, of how the uh, Empire State Building uh, was built in one year and four months. That's a 102-story building. And this is 1931. This is before computers and engineering technology. Um, the uh, Eiffel Tower opened up in 1889. That took two years and two months to build. Uh, then there was the Pentagon in 1942. That took one year, four months, the largest office building in the world when that building opened up. And here we just have this little transit center that accommodates buses and taxi cabs, and, and we're going into the 15th year now. Do you think the benefits of the transit center the, or the hopes it could bring outweighs the cons of it? Like the cost? Well, I mean, we need it. <laughs> we, we definitely need it. I think it's going to be very good once it opens, but I think it is pretty outrageous that the community has been without a well-functioning transit center for six years. I think public outrage has had very minimal impact. Um, people are just pretty much like cattle. They just go with the flow. And it, it takes a lot to outrage people. And I think the Paul S. Sarbanes Transit Center has not been one of those. Um, because, you know, not everyone takes public transit. Not everyone believes in tr public transportation. You have a lot of people who still drive automobiles, and they couldn't care less um, if the transit center was completed or not. Um, so, I mean, there, there have been organizations, there are organizations that um, have been advocating to speed up this process all along. But when you look at all of these scores and scores of articles and, and representatives from these said organizations are out there you know, just, you know, clenching their fists saying that this needs to be solved and nothing happens. So I, I guess there's some fights that you just can't win. When do you think the, uh, the transit center will be complete? Ah, oh, I wish I knew. And as far as I know, the county has stopped um, giving any official target dates because they did that for so many years and missed every one of them. Do you think uh, it's, um, like, complexity and scope, do you think that's any excuse for all the delays we've had? Well, I think, I think it is a complex structure, but it's not like first of its kind, all right? Well, I'm, I'm not a structural engineer or an architect or a city planner, but I'm, I'm sure if, if people had paid more attention uh, to what was being done, um, deadlines that were being stipulated and should be stuck to, um, it probably could have been, or it should have been done in a, in a more expeditious manner than it was. Um, even the county government, the city, um, city council, the county council um, is really just horrified by this whole thing. I, and it's embarrassing to them, it's embarrassing to their constituents. And um, I, hope that, I hope that a lesson is learned um, from the Paul S. Sarbanes Transit Center, but I wouldn't count on it.